Why, why did you decide to try this personally yourself? Well, I generally try the major cases, and I believe this will be classed as a major case. And he is going to be, uh, I would imagine, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> it was unusual for Jack Ruby to be in that crowd. I don't pass on that. Uh, unusual for being in that crowd? I don't... Well, I was. I haven't been here since last night, so I don't know anything about delivery. Well, the story of Osborne and Ruby were previously appointed. I think I heard it on radio or something, but I don't know anything about it. We have a chance to talk to Ruby. I have not talked with. Okay. No, sir, I've not talked with either one of them. Well, will we get a chance to talk to them? I don't know anything about that. You know, I, this was entirely about going over the evidence that I thought some of you would want. You know Ruby before this. No, sir. Saw him in this very same room Friday night when we had the defendant up here. There was a state party for the Texas Bar Association in the Adolphus Hotel. Were you there? No, sir, I wasn't there. As a matter of fact, some of... Oh, excuse me. If some of you will recall, he asked a question from out here in the audience or answered a question. He stand right back here and I didn't know who he was. I thought he was a member of the press and he told me as we walked out of here that he was the nightclub operator here. What question did he ask? Huh? What question did he ask? I don't remember, but he... he uh, maybe it was an answer, but he said something. I, I remember it was Friday night when I asked you to do an interview with me on the phone, and you had another call, and, and Ruby was hanging around in the background. You were on the phone, and I said... Uh, and, I, and then you had to uh, go away, and I, and I asked Ruby, uh, because he seemed to me like a detective. <laughs> he seemed to be all over this place. I said, would you see if you could get him on the phone or over to here? Here now, and he went around, and he got you, and he brought you over to my telephone. It might have been where he told me who he was. I didn't know who he was either when he... Uh, I think someone here answered that question in that he answered a question. Somebody asked something, and he answered it back there, and I don't know what it was. I think it was some question about a street or an address or a name or something. It looks to me like you're a good friend. I don't know. <laughs> conspiracy, Watson. If you knew the true facts, you'd be amazed at it. In what way? It'll be proven in a few days later what the charges will be filed against me, plus the fact of the assassination. A complete conspiracy against me, Rob. The only thing I can say... What is your name, man? I don't know how to do it. Harry Kendall. Harry Kendall. Everything pertaining to what's happening has never come to the surface. The world will never know the true facts of what occurred, my motives. <laughs> Uh, in other words, I'm the only person in the background that knows the truth pertaining to everything relating to my substance. Do you think it'll ever come out? No, because uh, unfortunately, uh, the... Uh, the people have, that have so much to gain and, and have such a material motive for putting me in a position I'm in will never let the true facts come of our boards to the, to the world. Now, these people are in <coughs> very high positions, Jack? Yes. I mentioned about Adelaide Stevens, if he was vice president, there would never have been an assassination of our beloved president. Can we just throw it down? Well, the answer is the man in office now. Ladies and gentlemen, you have reached a verdict in this case. May I have it, Sheriff, please?
We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of murder with malice as charged in the indictment and assess his punishment at death. Signed, Max E. Causey Foreman. So say you all, ladies and gentlemen. Is that your unanimous verdict? Will all of you whose verdict that is please hold up your right hand? All right, Sheriff, be your prisoner. May I thank this jury for a victory for Keep your seats, please. There'll be no moving out. Don't let anybody out of the courtroom. Jack Ruby is guilty of the murder with malice of forethought. The jury recommended the sentence for death. Now, uh, once we get our attorney, attorney Henry file, Wade on the front steps of the courthouse, Mr. Wade has uh, about to give us his reaction to the verdict. Most of the newsmen uh, have him here. Henry Wade, who headed the prosecution of, of uh, Jack Ruby. What's your reaction, Mr. Wade? Well, from the start, when this happened, I thought it was a case where he should have the death penalty. I've said that all along, told the jury that. And we asked, Henry Wade, the district attorney. And we uh, asked for it. I think the facts fully warranted. I think it was uh, an assassination in itself of a man handcuffed in police custody. And I think it went actually deeper than that, than uh, who the person was killed. I think it was more of a... a you might say a murder or a killing of our government by law rather than men. I think it actually is a step. Uh, it even advances civilization uh, quite a bit, I believe, by this verdict. Mr. Wade, something that had been bothering a lot of people was the question of whether or not there was any link whatsoever between Jack Ruby and Lee Oswald. This wasn't clarified in court. Could you clarify it for us? Well, it's one of those things that... Uh, uh, you can't prove. Uh, as a matter of fact, if we had anybody that we thought could establish it, we'd put them on the stand. I will say we had 10 or 12 witnesses that were willing to testify that they had seen them together, but I didn't believe any of the witnesses. Some of them were given lie detectors and showed they weren't telling the truth. And I, uh, there's nothing, uh, we had nothing where we could legally prove that he was. As far as you are concerned, then, from your investigation, Ruby was acting alone and Oswald was that acting was alone. Our, that's the theory we tried the case on entirely. We had no, uh, uh, whether there was a connection or not, we don't know. We have no proof of it, and we assume that there was not. In any way, do you have testified you before the Warren Commission? Well, I don't, I don't know. I asked for it and was satisfied with it. This chaos in here is the debris of the defense of Jack Ruby. It's in the room of Jack Ruby's chief defense counsel, Mr. Melvin Belli, and it's the place to which all the telegrams are now pouring in from all over the country. Telegrams commenting on the jury's verdict. Mr. Belli, how, how do you feel about the personal way you've come out of this trial? The personal way that I've come out? Mm -hmm. I'm the lawyer. I'm only concerned how Jack Ruby feels. He's the client. This case wasn't tried for me. This case was tried for Jack Ruby. His conscience is clean. He's a sick man. I think he just did what a lot of other Americans would have liked to have done. And actually, I don't think uh, he had a fair trial altogether. I think like most people do around here, uh, I'm, I'm on Ruby's side, and uh, I, don't, I don't think he should, should uh, be, be deserved to be fried, you know.